Welcome back to Uruk, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dominions 5, Warriors of the Faith. It is early fall in the year 5 of the Ascension Wars, and Ursula, praise her, is just about to claim dominance over this world. Just in case, the Entu has claimed the Throne of Knowledge in Ursula's favor, so now she's only one throne point away from victory, and we are going to pull out all the stops to make sure that happens in this episode. So we're going to move pretty fast. I'm not going to go over the magic sites we found. We found a couple, you know, more gems. That's great, but you've seen it all before. What's interesting, though, is we cast Baleful Star at the province with Zeus the Titan, the throne province, to hopefully curse some of them. And we also imprinted souls so that we could see what they got. So let's take a look. So here's what we're fighting with. We have some madmen some flagellants, and they're being led by two... Where are they? They're here somewhere. Two priests. Two, uh... Mad priests. There they are. Okay? So what does our enemy have? Well... Our enemy has... About 50 Springhawks, which are magical beings that are ethereal. They have hardly any hit points whatsoever, but their attack skill and defense skill are amazing. So your odds of hitting them are very low. Plus, again, they're ethereal. And when they attack, they do a lightning attack, which, which is terrible. Now, it is fall, so we're in the exact opposite time period of when they're the strongest. So we're doing that at a good time. Then also there are Griffins. Griffins are undisciplined, but they have great morale. In this case, I don't know if they normally do. Yeah, home province, squad bonus, experience bonus. Overall, they're pretty decent at 44 hit points. They're pretty beefy. And then finally, Zeus himself has a ton of gems. Seven air, four earth. And he has some Icarids, which are essentially just dudes with wings. So not a huge army, but a devastating one. Just watch how quickly they tear apart this army. So they're just walking, minding their own business. Then all of a sudden, it's just on. So Zeus did something to them. I'm going to check real quick and see what it was. I guess it's alphabetical. Okay, Fog Warriors. So what Fog Warriors does is it turns all of your units into mist form. Which means they're very difficult to hit without magical... Yeah, so you can't really hurt them without magical weapons. Any attacks made against them do one point of damage only. But it could be broken with an exceptionally hard blow. Alright. That's rough. So let's keep going. So they just tear these guys up. Now, if you look at the actual battle, they killed 126. They didn't lose anything at all. So we're really going in there, hoping for the best. Smithmaster Sr. was the victim of an assassination attempt. Let's see how that goes. Well, Smithmasters does have a bodyguard. The bodyguard's hit by the assassin. Smith Masters is blessing. And Smith Masters takes him out with a vine arrow. Good job, Smith Masters. All right. World Pillar. We're attacking Pythium. And it shouldn't be too much to look at, and it is not. We don't lose anything. Okay. Temperature has dropped dramatically in Caban. Belotherus, farmers are have angered a vengeful deity of the wild, a monster boar. Now, this is a story event, but hopefully we don't have to deal with it. Warring tribes are causing unrest in Smacia, and the population is uh, getting death because the fields have not been tended properly. Okay. All right. So here's what we're doing. We're moving everyone together. I'm a little nervous now about the mist form, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have... Sarah Tuckfo? Oh, 
Oh, we could really use a phantasmal attack. It's only four provinces, though. I don't think we can get there. Yeah, this is five provinces away. That would actually be pretty helpful. What I want is to get Zeus to waste his gems. As much as I can. But... So he can't cast Imprint... Imprint Mines, or whatever that spell was. He cannot. It requires four Astral. It also costs 25 pearls, and we're really low on pearls right now. Alright, we're going to let that one go. But we are doing a bunch of stuff. Lorenzo is loaded up with troops. As much as he can carry. Magical, and our Ursuline Guard, and our Awe Nymphs. And we're heading on over. He is teleporting the whole lot of them over to Gnome Peaks. In Gnome Peaks, we are just getting ready. I've got everybody scripted, and we're also recruiting a new NC who's going to thug for us. Over here, we have everyone coming, including Krug. Now, Krug is the linchpin of this whole operation. We need him to do what he does best, because here's what he's going to do. He's going to ground our entire army, which doesn't mean he's sending them to their room without dinner. What it means is they are all going to be resistant to electricity, which will help incredibly against the 50 Springhawks. Then he's going to cast Fog Warriors himself, which will turn our entire army into mist form. And then he's going to cast Will of the Fates, which will give our entire army luck. And then finally, as if that's not enough, he's going to cast Doom on our enemies to give all of them cursed. Now, the problem is it's going to take him a while to do all this. So Ground Army was the most important, and unfortunately I need Summon Earth Power to be able to do it because it is an Earth spell. So it is what it is. Krug is, Krug is the linchpin of this whole operation, and so we need to keep him okay. So we're not going to lay our troops out the way we originally planned. We're just going to have them all in a big square in the middle, but we'll do that real quick. Okay, so... We're also moving this huge army down to Pythium. Hopefully we'll take them out too in the same turn. World Pillar's taking the Greater Wild. Ursula is even doing her part for the war effort. She's forging Barrier, which is a magnificent shield that gives you almost full protection against lightning. And it's just a really good shield in general. And that seems to be what we got here. What I probably should do is like Kim and Urzababa. So Urzababa is doing Ethereal. In this instance, that's not going to be great for us. Ethereal's good, but Sermon of Courage is better. Because we essentially we don't want our troops to run. We want them to fight till the bitter end. And Ethereal will only affect one square. So even if he manages to cast it all four times, that at most will be like eight people. Whereas Sermon of Courage... Once we, once we get to it. Or, no, he can't cast Panic. Okay, I have some people casting Panic. Sermon of Courage affects 10+, plus, so that'll be a large portion of our army. I just think it's worth it. We're trying to improve the morale as best we can. Okay. In fact, just so you know, guys, I did set Yickley to cast Wind Guide in that last big battle at the throne. I was like, why'd you cast it, Yickley? Well, it's because I told him to. But I don't want him to do that anymore. In fact, I was going to have him... I don't really have a use for Yickley right now, because I was going to have him protect us all against uh, Lightning, but Krug Smash is doing that, so... Yickley is an interesting fellow, because I don't think all of the Springhawks... I mean, yeah, Thunderstrike will work wonders against the Griffins and the Icarids, but not so much against the... Springhawks, which are the majority of... That army. I guess we could do Thunder Ward just to start off. It'll protect 15 units from... Uh... I wonder if it stacks. Confuse? Three, uh, one... Nah, it's not enough. It doesn't do enough. That's the only thing I can think of. They don't have arrows, so we don't have to care about arrow fend. If we are protected from Thunder and Lightning, that basically nullifies the Springhawks for the most part. The Griffins, it doesn't, and the Griffins are going to be a big pain in the butt. But we can hit them with evocations. Hmm. 
Hmm. All right, we'll do it. But we're going to need... Ezekiel is, of course, going to need some air gems. And he's not going anywhere near a lab, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to give him to one of these guys. Well, Bobo we've given a bunch to. And really, Bobo doesn't need them. And as and Genga also. So our, I mean, the, hopefully these guys will target the Griffins and the Icarids and not the, uh, not the uh, Springhawks, obviously. That's our hope. I'm not worried about Yis. They don't have anything worth noting in this general direction. I'm leaving everyone, well, most everyone behind at uh, Peace Haven. Although now I wish I did bring some of them, but it's okay. We're bringing a bunch. We're bringing our troops, which is what we really need. And Captain Bill, who's going to mass protect everyone. Of course, we also have Kiku, in case it fails with, with uh, Captain Bill. We're going to have a bunch of NCs. It's going to be an interesting battle. Let's just put it that way. All right, let's end the turn. 42 commanders are doing nothing. Well, you know what? That's okay. We're doing what, what needs to be done. Some big battles going on, though, somewhere. Okay. Pythium's attacking someone in the Silver Wall. I guess we'll take... Oh, okay, they're trying to break the siege with two Theurgs. I don't think they're going to be able to do it, but we'll see. Yeah, it doesn't look like... They are ethereal. But yeah, Pythium lost that one. All right, they're, they're sallying forth against us. But now, what they don't know is we have... Holy crap. Okay, so Pythium got a little tired of, of waiting. But look at us, ladies and gentlemen. That is Enkidu power right there. We don't have a ton of commanders. We don't have a ton of magic, which is probably what we need. But we do have plenty of soldiers. Although I wish we had a bit more Ursuline Guard. So they have great eagles. They have serpents. They have trolls. They have Emerald Guard. They have a ton of Theurgs. Like a ton. They have their Harbinger and their goddess Tolia. The Titan of Rivers. Of course, tons of gems. Why not? Enchanted Shield. Apparently she's left-handed. Enchanted Helmet. So basic items. Nothing too great. Although she does have the Water Lens. So she'll... Well, that just gives her a free... Another gem. Which she has plenty of. She has a little bit of fire. Let's see what she does. I wonder what spells she's going to cast. All right, here we go. We're starting off with some arrows. They are etherealizing everything. Hopefully we have mass protection. Is there not a shaman in this army? There has to be. Wow, we don't have a shaman in this army. Wait, so who came? Rolandis was always there. Rob Sto oh, Rob Stowe's our thug guy. Okay, he's cool, but where? We don't have a shaman? For real? That seems so odd to me. There's Nenton. All right, come on. Corvus, we have three air mages. We have a Nin there. But yeah. Doesn't look like we have a shaman. Okay, so no mass protection. Not a good thing. Did we... Okay, I don't know what the hell that was. Did they just curse all of us? They sure did. Alright, Tolia just cursed our entire army. So she cast Doom on us. So we're more likely to get afflictions. Here come the, the eagles. I'm not too worried about them, although they are ethereal. Ethereality doesn't protect you against lightning bolts. Oh, this is pure chaos. Tolia's getting into the front. Our thug can't make it out. He's trapped by his own bodyguards. Oh, our flankers have actually made it to the flank. Holy moly. Hopefully we'll get some dead somethings. All right, Toldia looks like she's frozen. She's down to 171 hit points. She's almost fatigued out, but no real damage against her just yet. She is ethereal. Looks like Nenton might be the one doing that to her. I don't know. She's almost fatigued out, and then we could surround her and hopefully cut her to pieces.
Well, we're definitely winning the battle. All right, so she's she's fatigued out. Wow, she's 2,236 years old. That's that's pretty good. But she's still got full hit points. Come on, guys. Surround her so we get that bonus. There we go. There we go. We're surrounded. Oh! Wait, did she die or did she just take off? That couldn't have... She couldn't have died. That was way too quick. Marcus is back. He's still alive. Okay, where are you, Talia? Oh, they have a Nyad fighting for them, too. That's pretty cool. Where the hell is Tullia? I know this has got to be riveting, but I... Where? Okay, those are all our people. They're still alive. Okay, Horatius. Menohippa, that's the Nyad. Alright, there's Shaman. There's Corvus. Blocked again by a standard. Alright, am I just losing my mind here? Or is Tolia not on this list? Does she have... Maybe she had that spell that sends you back home when you get hit? That guy, Nenton... Marcus. Okay, a bunch of people. There's even an assassin fighting in the battle. That's hilarious. Hannibal? That seems like a weird name for an archer. Nope, there's no Tolia. I don't know what happened here. We'll find out later, I guess. Okay, let's keep going. They're still fighting. I guess the Harbinger is inspiring them to keep going. A bunch of our guys are... Fleeing. They've had enough. We just we have that vitriolic cube. We just took that out. All right, we can speed this up because we've got a lot going on in this episode. Normally, this would be like the highlight battle of the episode, but not this one. Take out the harbinger. Oh, he's got too much awe, but we're hitting him. We're hitting him. Nah, he flew away. We took out the naiad though. I heard her scream. All right. So we took out an arch theurg. We no, the harbinger made it out. Tullia made it out. We took out 78 of their 131 troops, and we lost 53 of our own, with an additional 27 retreating. All of our commanders survived, but I still wouldn't call that an unqualified victory. And the Greater Wild... Yeah, we took it over, and then we're besieging that fortress. And Livenmark, Thief the Stolen Air Gems. Well, screw that guy. All right, cool. So, we're in Pythium. What made it? So, okay. All right. Everyone is cursed. Damn that Tullia. She cursed our entire army. That jerk. All right. Box formation. Attack closest. We don't have any shaman. That is, that is an, a mess. Although, it apparently didn't hurt us too much. Alright, hold an attack. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, essentially, this is going to be all about morale. Oh, she soul slays. That's pretty cool. Two liquid bodies? Not a good idea. How did I even think of doing that? We can't give her any gems, unfortunately. It's too late for that. So... Now, we have more troops than they do, so Astral Geyser would hurt us more than it would hurt them. Opposition? It could potentially kill a magical being. Do they have any magical beings? Is the Harbinger a magical being? How far does it go? 25? Alright, let's give it a go. Why not? Okay. that Oh, that guy's there. Although, wow, he doesn't have any troops at all. In fact... Why don't we just give his troops to somebody who can give them a bit more of a 
a morale bonus. Robstow? He's cursed now, but Robstow, you're gonna fight up front with the with the Ursuline Guard, because you are you're thugged out. You may be cursed, but you are a thug. Cursed thug on 36 hit points. Wow. I thought you had more than that. I thought you had like 40, but whatever. You also have magical resistance, but apparently not enough to resist the curse. Okay, blessing. Yeah, that's fine. You do your thing. Calrander's fine. Okay, plus three morale's great for Maganorte. Sure. We have Corvus. Corvus has his guardians. Okay, Nenton's in charge of our ranged component. We can move them up a little bit. Get some good shots in. Nenton, though, we want to keep off to the side. That guy as well. All right, Aga, we want you. You're blessing everyone, so we'll pull you back. Oh wait, but we gotta get you close to Soul Slay. Hmm. All right. All right. Who are those guys way in the back? No, but seriously. There they are. They're with Aga. Um, nah. We're gonna give you two for Landis. All right. All right. We're ready to go. We're gonna hit him with everything. And hope for the best. We're going to hang out at Greater Wild here. All right. So here it is. The final act. The final act of this event. So we have Mott. Okay, we're going to call Mott. Um, you know, I haven't heard from Arcade Knight in months. I don't know what he's up to, but we're going to Arcade Knight this guy out. And Arcade is going to get the Helm of Perfection, which gives you A plus 5 and Inspiration. Wow, with Inspiration, though, he should have troops, shouldn't he? Ooh, maybe he shouldn't have that. We should have the Horror Helm. He should have the Barrier. He should have the Chainmail Displacement. He should have the Frostbrand. And the Krupp's Bracers. And the Shoes of... There we go. He can still have one more thing. We don't really have anything to give him. So, I guess the Woundfend... Amulet. All right, Arcade Knight. Yeah, he has 42 hit points. Okay. So we're going to script him. All right, Lorenzo's here too. He shouldn't be leading the troops, though. Jones. I guess we can give you the Helm of Perfection. You don't really need the Ah, but the three morale is going to be good. Oh, but you can only... Nah, actually, we should give it to Lorenzo. He's leading more people. He's... Yeah, I'm sorry, Jones. Lorenzo wins out on this one. So what did... You get the Crown of the Titans? Oh, right, they let you command more. Wait, does that mean he can command less? Yeah, he went down... <laughs> He's commanding 65 of 15 units. That's okay. I think I I think I'll manage with that. Plus one morale though. That's not fantastic, is it? Is there anything else I could do for him? No, we can give you Light of the Northern Star. We can give you that. Okay. So what this does, what this uh the thing this banner does is all wizards on the battlefield are more powerful in astral magic. How this benefits me is it allows like more effective soul slays and stuff like that. So he has four astral, which will this will give him five. So there's gotta be something amazing he can cast too. Oh shoot, they took all the troops away from him. Okay, well, wonderful. We're kind of in a bind here. 
I guess... Duke T-Rex, are you a... No, you're just an Erish Dinger. So you're not a good leader. Oh yeah yeah. Alright, so... We're gonna give Lorenzo back his helmet. There's a little bit of inspiration there, and it will allow him to... To lead mighty troops. Although we could give the really good troops to Jones. Uh... Alright. So Jones will hold whoever he can. And then Lorenzo will hold the rest. Well, would they better be better under Duke Terrax? No, they're both negative one morale. So. Alright. I'm not even going to set battle orders. They're just going to hold in the middle and do whatever they want to do. So Jones is going to cast his spells. Lorenzo is going to... What do I want out of you, Lorenzo? Lights of Northern Star will make all Wiznats all Wiznats. Power of the Spheres. Eh. We've already got Krug casting a lot of stuff, but maybe you could do... And we're already casting Will of the Fates. I'm not casting Battle Fortune, though. So this is Luck. Well, okay, this is the same thing, so that doesn't really matter. Control. Okay, now this will control a magical unit of which the Hawks are, but there's... It's just one at a time. Okay. Opposition will kill them, but again, one at a time. Enslave mind. Yeah, there's just not much... Not much good astral stuff. This will, like, kill everything. Yeah, it destroys the retinas of all soldiers, so that's not really what I want. Anti-magic will give magic resistance to our guys. I mean, I don't think we're really expecting much in the way of... Well, we might, though. Alright, we'll do anti-magic with him. And at that point... What's our best bet here? What does a lot of damage? Not a ton. Not a ton, really, that he can cast. Army of Giants would be fun. But he's he doesn't have enough nature. Um... All right. Well, because he's gonna have he's gonna have an extra penetration. Let's let's give him like something that will. If we can convert even a couple of the hawks to our side, that would be helpful. I think. I mean, if the choice is either between destroying them with the opposition spell, right, which magic resistance will negate, if possible, range twenty five, fatigue twenty, or we can convert them over to us, which is control, range 25, magic resistance negates. Oh, 100 fatigue cost, though. All right, I guess we're just going to destroy them then. Oops. All right, continue to cast spells, and so that means we need to give Lorenzo, well, he has a penetration item, but we need to give him some gems. Sure, take a bunch, I don't care. This is the time. If we're going to need him, now is definitely the time. All right, Arcade Knight, you are going to... Oh, you can't summon Earth Power. You can Iron Skin yourself. No, but that'll make you susceptible to... Nope, don't want to do that. Stone skin is probably the best we want to do. Or liquid body. Let's just liquid body. And then... Actually, does that mean that you can... Yeah, quicken self? And then just, just go at it. Kill whoever you can. Without... Without... Uh, without mercy or pity. Reinvigoration 6. 
That's pretty dang good. That's pretty good. Encumbrance 7. Alright. Cool. That's Arcade. Let's see if we can't put him, like, near the edge. I don't want to put him, like, too out by himself. I don't want to be surrounded, but near the edge. Maybe... I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work out, but he is... Like, a griffin might be able to take him out. He's not ethereal, but he is liquid-bodied. Oh, well, well, we'll check it out. Alphiriel's lightning bolting. Hopefully, he'll attack the griffins. Ragnaroach firing. Storm of Thorns. We're going to give you some nature gems. Knock yourself out. Do I have any like items that will help you? Thistle Mace, right. You both have Thistle Maces now. Gavin 2. Thistle Mace. And some nature gems. Okay. That's them. Jones. We're going to trade in your Scepter of Authority. Well, that gives you command, though. I was going to say we're going to give you the... Um, the Winterbringer. No, Winterbringer is too important. You're going to lose some command ability, but... That's the world we live in. Wow, damn, that hurts. That really hurts. Okay. All right, he's solid. Okay, so and we're gonna have Jones cast spell. He's already casting spells. That's fine. Duke Tirax is gonna. Well, Duke Tirax was gonna try to control them, but actually, now that I see how much energy that well, but he'll have plenty of gems. Is he set to conserve? No. Okay. All right, do T-Rex. You can keep doing what you're doing. Um, Batman's Frozen Harding. That's fine. Then Kino. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Okay. All right. Then we have all these folks. First thing we got to do, though, is we got to give the air gems from Nganga. Oh, shoot. How do we do this? Let's get Yickly. Okay, maybe if we select Yickly and select Nganga, maybe? No, that didn't work. How, how the hell do you move gems from one person to another? We can give it to Sid Deckard. There's got to be a way to do this that I don't know about. So Sid Deckard is the first person on the list. Huh. I have an idea. Let's move Yikuli and Nganga by themselves. And then... Well, that doesn't really help us because... Alright, let's, let's do this. Let's move them... Here. And now we should be able to do it. No. I mean, come on. This is ridiculous. Well, you know what, though? If Sid is always coming up, then theoretically, Yickley should be able to get it from Sid, too. Yeah. All right. There we go. That's the winner. Why is it still saying he can't cast it? The gem should boost him a level in air magic. So... We should be good. Why aren't we good? I'll know as soon as I find him. There he is. Oh, he's good. Okay, now that he has the gems, he's good. But I think he might need more. So Bobo, hate to say it, buddy, but... Yickley right now is a bit of a higher priority than you are. Oh, he, oh, he was going to do Thunder Ward too. All right, well... Sorry. Yickley's got three, so... This is his game. All right. Lovely. Monty Hobbs. Well, 
all mages are going to be a level of astral higher. So let's, um, damn, we're already at 35 minutes. Are you shitting me? So he's going to have two, technically. So that will give him the opportunity to paralyze. Magic resistance negates, though. Or mind burn. 12 damage versus paralyzing. Let's just let's just go with what we know here. Actually, we're gonna start though with um, body ethereal. Man, I can't believe how fast the time goes when you're planning this stuff out. All right, so we're gonna go with uh, where did it go? Mind burn, mind burn, and mind burn. Okay, so then we're going to say that is control. Four, and we're gonna give that to Ishtar. Could do Soul Slay though. Actually, no. We're gonna have to set up Ishtar separately. She's gonna do Liquid Body, and then she is going to Soul Slay. All right, Gore, can't give you anything, so you're just going to have to hold and stay alive. Actually, we're going to give all your troops to Kim, so they'll have better morale. Sorry, buddy. Or Urza Baba, too, for the ones that... Uh... Sorry, Gore. All right. So three, was it? Three's not, four. There we go. Mind burn. Okay, that's Viper Dave, Yagor, the Zax. And Sid Deckard is actually going to do the same thing as Ishtar. So we're going to do control three here. And we're going to go up and... Three. Now, Ragnar, you have five mechanical men. You. Shoot, I don't know. Stone skin. And then. Temper flesh? Wow, you really can't do much. Um, well, I guess Temper Flesh, and do any of our enemies have armor? Just the, just the, uh, Icarids. Maybe... Earth Grip, I guess? Doesn't affect flying units. Nope, that's pretty much everybody. That's not going to help us. I guess Flying Shards, I mean, whatever. Alright, we're good. All right, Krug, I'm counting on you. Totally counting on you. We're 39 minutes here. Let's end the turn. Okay. Okay. This is going to be something, one way or another. You know what? I don't think I... Some of the troops I didn't move around. That's okay. There's going to be plenty in the middle to protect our commanders. There's going to be plenty. I don't need to worry. I don't need to worry. Really, I don't. Okay, a lot going on, obviously. Alright, battle at the Fortress of Pythium. Okay, here we go. They have slingers. Guarding the walls, otherwise... Well, they have tons of hydras. Hydras have poison. They also have a telesthetic animate of their own. And our entire Ursuline Guard is on fire. Nice. Now they're getting Stellar Cascaded, I think. Well, our Ursuline Guard are definitely 
taking the brunt of this. Didn't we put... Oh, okay. I was like, where's our hero? There's Robsto. He seems okay. Oh, yeah, his fatigue is nowhere. He's doing great. I mean, besides being cursed. Okay. We're taking out some Hydras. There comes Robsto. They're doing a great job holding this gate, though. They got Elementals and Hydras. They're stellar cascading us to give us fatigue. If we had more commanders, it would be easier. I think we just blew up... No, I, we thought we blew up Tolia, but we didn't. She just decided to come and attack us. Which, I don't know if I would call that a good move, Tolia. Alright, you could definitely hear the screams of our dying... Of our dying Ursuline Guard, and I I lost Robsto. Did Robsto go down? He was, you know what? He wasn't protected against poison. That wasn't a good matchup for him. Nope, there he is. He's trying so hard to get to Tullia. Oh, now he's heading up to the poison. Not a good idea. Not a good idea, Robsto. Shoot. Yeah, he's definitely, he's poisoned all to hell. Damn. Damn. I wish he would have stayed at Tolia. But he is regenerating. He's down to 20 hit points and he is paralyzed. Or stunned. But he still has regeneration. Oh, I think that was the end of Rob Stowe Broken Horn. Alright, our troops are fleeing. Yeah, what was I thinking? You don't you don't besiege Pythium without some poison resistance. Everybody's running. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people. But I think we killed Tullia. At least I don't see her. Okay, hopefully she'll actually appear on the list this time. Tolia, dead. Who did it? Who did it? Maiden of the Moon hit Titans. So, Ursuline Guard hit her with a Bronze Spear for 7 points of damage. Target was killed. So, one of our Ursuline Guard, who had been lit on fire, had been subjected to all kinds of horridness, managed to take her out. She's done for. Okay. All that's left is that Harbinger. And here we come. And, a, you know, a couple Hydras, a Telesthetic Animate. Some Theurgs. I'm not actually sure how we're going to do this. I mean, we're pretty beat up here. Alright, we are managing to hit it a little bit, but it has 75 hit points. It is fatigued out, which is helping us a lot, I'm sure. Oh, here comes a Kusariku. A couple of them, actually. I guess if we just get him to run, we don't actually have to kill him. But he has 30 morale. And somehow he's on fire. Yeah, Harbingers are pretty rough. Okay, now we're frozen harding him. That's working. Who's doing that? Or that guy may be doing it. Somebody's doing something to him. Nenton. Okay, so Nenton and that guy have moved up and they are casting numbness on the Harbinger. While some Kusarikus are fighting it. I hope that doesn't mean that the person who they were guarding is dead. And they took him out. Alright. Whew. You killed our god! Alright, so what happened? After the battle, holy crap, we found all manner of stuff. So, we only lost Robsto. Of all of our commanders, everyone survived but Robsto.
but we did lose 115 of our 180 troops, but in so doing, we took out about 120 of Pythium's troops, and their god is dead. But she's still, uh, she's still around. All right, Amberfields. What the hell is going on in Amberfields? A great wicker man? Barbarians? We defeated them. Living Mark. Vine men. And they beat us. Oh, Woodhenge Druid and some Vine men and Vine Ogres took out our province defense. Matamui, unfortunately, got found despite all of his stuff and was killed. Yeah, it looks like he fled, but he was killed when retreating to enemy territory. That sucks. Matamui couldn't survive throughout the end. Oh, Iron Peaks. We didn't even. I, I totally was like, where'd it go? All right. We are at 46 minutes, but you know what? That's what happens. Look at this. I mean, look at this monstrosity we've got going on here. All right, so what's this? Light of the Northern Star, right? That's from our banner. Okay, well, we definitely outnumber them. <laughs> All right, Krug, please do your thing. Okay, I, I saw his name, but I don't know what he cast. Okay, Springhawks are here. They, uh, well, they're, they're pretty decently close to Arcade. None of our other commanders, though, hopefully. Yeah, no, they're all safe right here in the middle. Apparently all the Griffins are going up here to fight the Iron Warriors, which I'm okay with. Okay, someone just did Mass Protection. Krug just cast Ground Army, so our entire army now should be... Shock resistant. Perfect. And now things are going too fast. I have, I can't see anything. It's just pure chaos. There's our forest troll. Oh, something just happened here. I think that was a bad thing, though. We are casting opposition, though. I have no idea if it works. What could that possibly be? All right, well, I don't know what this is, but it's probably bad. No! Holy crap, that was that was Krug Smash. Krug Smash just made us all mist-formed. Ha 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 ha. Take that, you bastard. All right, the Springhawks have all been driven off. The Griffins have all been driven off. Now we have a date with Zeus. Leading the charge is a misformed, although rusty equipmented, Masushu chariot. And we're, we're hitting Zeus with arrows. It's not a good day to be Zeus. He's done. He's already fleeing. He's cursed, because we remember we cursed their entire army too with Krug Smash. He's got a limp. He's weakened. Oh, that, that's too bad if we're not going to get to kill him. Well, he's fatigued out. Maybe we will. Come on. Get him. Okay, our chariots going after him. Oh, oh, did you see that? Did you see that? Our forest troll just whacked him. Zeus. Wow, he, he was doing us a lot of damage. But forest giant hit Titan of Heavens in the body with a great club for 30 points of damage and killed him just like that. The Chariot took 11 points out. The Chariot took 18. So the Chariot was just rocking him. Oh, we managed to somehow get one of the Springhawks on our side, even though I stopped scripting that, and they were attacking him. But yeah, what a way to end this series with all the magic we were throwing around, and he ended up getting taken down by a forest giant with a club. <laughs> that was pretty nice. Now, I just want to quickly look at Krug here. Ground Army... Fog Warriors. Oh, he he never managed to get Doom. So I wonder I wonder who did Doom. Somebody cursed Zeus. It might have been from when we cast the spell a long time ago. Alright, Krug, why why were you unable to cast all of the spells that we wanted you to cast? If I can even find you amidst all this. There's Lorenzo. There's Krug. Yeah, you're fatigued out, but you have all these gems. I thought you could use gems to 
to reduce fatigue. Still, look at how amazing Krug is here. Holy crap. All right, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The just gigantic armies of Ursula just struck down, struck down Zeus, the titan of the heavens. And it is going to fall to all caps. All caps is going to do the honors here. We're going to claim the throne of destiny. What an appropriate throne to end it with. We get luck plus another thing of order. And, uh, well, Ursula's currently hanging out in Jome, but we can imagine in our minds that she's here to witness this. In fact, she could, she could witness it. Let's go, um, let's go. She's going to have to leave her Anzu behind, but I think she'd be willing to do that. Cloud Trapeze. Iron Peaks. All right. 107 commanders are doing nothing, and you know what? I don't care at all. Coming in at just under an hour. All caps won. The N2 has claimed the throne of destiny in the name of Ursula. Praise her. We, we lost Pythium, but that's okay. Victory. Once again, Ursula. Twice now. Two different worlds. She rules supreme. And we're not going to read the rest of this because uh, it doesn't... Whoa. Okay. All right. Let's watch this a little bit. This is the history. We kind of got a slow start, Dominion-wise. You can see that the our enemies' Dominions are growing pretty rapidly. Okay, we're still in year one. So we got coast to coast here. We started pushing away Yis's Dominion. For a while, Pythium had the whole ocean under their rule, but then we started pushing it. So did Agartha. Okay, year two. I think this is when we start moving against Agartha. Yep, here we are moving up here. And we've taken out this area here. Okay, we're moving up again. We're tightening the noose around Agartha. And there we go. Agartha belongs to us. Then we start fighting against Pythium. We move against them. We start taking their provinces. Okay, Vanarus looked pretty big. Bandar Log looked okay. We never did see them. There's M Machaka was just about ready to fall too. Look at them. They're basically destroyed. Ariu. Oh, well, that didn't... Okay, hold, hold on. There's Ariu. Okay, so Ariu was doing okay for a little bit. So was Machaka. So it looked like it's a combination of Tian Chi and Pythium pushing out pushing out Machaka, and then Bandar Log and Pythium. So Pythium was actually pretty strong. Oh, no, there's Vanarus. Vanarus is the one who, who yeah, they they were fighting Pythium, too. A lot of battles going on here. So Vanarus, Bandar Log, Tian Chi. Machaka survived till the end, just to be a servant. Whoever their god is, is a servant of Ursula. Holy moly. Look at that. Look at that. All right, before we end it here, before we end it, wow, whew, we are going to, first of all, look at the Hall of Fame. So, Berlandis, three kills, but 185 experience. Berlandis was our best hero, followed by Nurgle Aresh, who survived the whole thing. I don't think I've ever had a prophet survive an entire campaign before, so good job, Nurgle Aresh. Aga of Kish followed up. Illa, Illa the Thug at the end. Then we had Kionashur who died, unfortunately. Kiero and the Marquis de Sade were up there. And then we had Gillian down at the bottom here. So those were our currently... I really wish when somebody died, they'd take them off the board and replace them with new heroes, but whatever. Okay, and the score graphs. So, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> pretty much from the beginning, we were in the head in terms of provinces. Ariu, it looks like, got close to us here, but then we just took off, and everything kind of went our way. Forts, 
starting about maybe one third through the game, we started winning on forts. Income, we were there was never any doubt. We were always on top of the world in income. We had good scales. Gem income, it was a bit more up until about a third of the way through. That's when we really differentiated ourselves. Otherwise, we were all kind of in the scrum. Research was tough for us. It wasn't until past halfway, between half and two-thirds of the way through the game, that our research finally took hold and we took the lead on that. Otherwise, we were just kind of fighting through. Dominion was a struggle. So it looks like right about halfway, right when we took out Agartha. All right, that's Agartha. Yeah. When we were fighting Agartha, we were about equal in Dominion, tied for first. And then once we took Agartha out, we kind of ran with our Dominion at that point. Vanarus, of course, was a good second. And army size. Pretty much the same story. Once we took care of Agartha, almost about halfway through, there was no stopping us. Finally, Ascension Points, we were all kind of together until about halfway through. Then we took a minor lead, but tied with Vanarus, and then we just made it happen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, thank you. I just got to say thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long series. They were long episodes, but I think we had a lot of fun. And Ursula, once again, praise her, reigns supreme. So once again, I'm Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Go out there, do great things. And oh, by the way, even though I am technically retired, all this time, while I was recording this series, I was also recording a second series in the background that I just didn't tell you about. Only a few people knew about it, and it is known as Fish Food, and it's going to center around the armies of Yis under their god, I Hear You Can Talk to Fish. And I created a random map. I took so much time learning the random map creator and tweaking it that is mostly water with just a few islands, a couple big islands and a few one square islands. It's going to be fun, guys. So stay tuned. That one's coming soon. Technically, still retired because it's already recorded, <laughs> but I will be uploading it for your enjoyment. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good one.